Okay, <clears throat> today folks we're going to talk about how to draw a planet in space in Affinity Designer. Something that looks a little bit like this. Okay, so um, uh, let me show you how I did this. So first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to uh, basically switch over to uh, another sheet that I've already created and, um, and show you this that I uh, have already pre-made because it takes a little while to do. Um, but all it is is just a, a black rectangle, if I scroll down there, uh, a black filled rectangle with lots of little ellipses on it. And these are all just little tiny dots, basically, t tiny circles on the page. And I've filled them with colors that are, are approaching white, right? So these lighter colors uh, on, the, uh, on my, my standard color uh, swatches here. Um, I, I did add a few that were a little bit darker, like uh, that one there. Uh, it's this uh, this dark gray color. Those are those are some dimmer stars, basically. But that's what this is going to make. It's going to make my space with the stars in it. So after I create this, and you just kind of randomly place them around, uh, I'm going to select everything, and I'm going to uh, uh, going to export that. Okay, uh, export. And you can leave it, do, leave it as a PNG, you can export it as a JPEG, it doesn't really matter a whole lot. We just want uh, a bitmap. So one of the things you want to do is change this from whole document to uh, um, selection without background. And then click the export button. And then you can name it whatever you want. And I've already done this, I've named this stars2, and it's right there. So I'm not going to do that again, but I would normally here uh, hit click save here and remember where you where you saved it because that's going to be important later uh, when you want to uh, bring this into your document. So I'm going to go ahead and hit cancel and I'm going to just delete all this off the page so you can do the same thing once you've created it, once you've saved it as a bitmap. All right, so after that, I'm going to go ahead and just draw uh, any size rectangle on the on the page. And then I'm going to go ahead and uh, manually type in what I want. So I want the x and y coordinates to start uh, at the top of the page, the 0x uh, and 0y coordinates. And I want this to cover the full page. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Just type that in. I'm going to hit 0 and then tab, 0 and then tab again. So that gets it to 0 x and y coordinates. And then my page uh, size is 8.5 by 11 inches. So I'm going to go ahead and type that in, 8.5, tab, and then 11 tab and there we go my rectangle covers my entire page which is exactly what i want now that i've done that i'm going to give this a uh, a fill and i'm going to go ahead and click on the fill tool here uh, and then go up here to the type of fill tool and uh, click the the drop down i'm going to change it to bitmap okay and this is where that bitmap comes in so i've i've got this stars 2 that i've already created and i'm going to choose that and click open and that fills my, uh, my entire rectangle with these stars. Now, this is a, a bitmap fill, and it's basically a repeating one. So it, uh, it, you can see that here's a, one of the dim stars here, and then it repeats down there and, and stuff like that. So you can play with this a little bit. You can, you can change the size of it. You can change the angle of it. So um, it's not as obvious that uh, you get repeating stars. So now you can see they're, they're kind of not on the... They're not on the same line anymore. Anyway, you can play with that as much as you want. Um, uh, if you want uh, more smaller stars, you can change this the size of this to be uh, smaller. If you want uh, fewer, larger stars, you can change it bigger, right? So whatever. Play with that as you will. So once that's done, once you're satisfied with that, uh, I'm going to leave that selected, and I'm going to uh, press Control-J to create another rectangle over the top of it. Okay, this is going to have the exact same fill and everything, um, but I don't want it to have the same fill. I actually want it to have a, a uh, um, solid fill. So I'm going to go ahead and click Solid on the top one. And right now this is white, but I don't want... White's not the color I want. Um, let's change this to something a little bit closer to orange, and then I'm going to change it uh, to quite a bit lighter than that. And after I've done that, uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, give it a, a, a transparency. I'm going to go ahead and tell it what type I want. So I've clicked on the transparency tool, now I'm going to tell it I want an elliptical transparency. And the 
first thing I'm going to do is move this up into that top corner right there. And then I can play with this a little bit. I can move it around and do something along these lines. And if I think that's a, a little too, uh, um, too bright, I can uh, uh, darken that up a little bit I can, by, by changing the, the fill. Um, here we go. Maybe that's a little too a little too bright. Maybe I can change it somewhere around there. Anyway, you can play with that as much as you want. So this is going to be my light source in space. So this is kind of the light emanating from the local sun or star. Okay. So that's, uh, that's that piece of it. Now I'm going to go ahead and start by uh, creating the planet by uh, selecting the ellipse tool and holding down the shift key uh, while I do that, while I drag so I get a perfect circle. And I can make that any size I want. Uh, you might want to, you know, change it up a little bit later, whatever. Uh, but you can you make it any size you want, and it doesn't really matter what fill you have in it because we are going to uh, um, we're going to go and get a fill, right? And the, how I did this was I went out to uh, um, to Google and I just Googled marble images, right, and uh, looked for something that. Uh, that worked. I, I, I ended up with, with this particular one. So I'm going to right click on that and say copy image. I'm going back into Affinity Designer and I'm going to click on this insert inside the selection. So I am going to click on that and then just paste that. And I'm going to hit Control V to paste. Okay. And there's my image. So I'm going to drag that around a little bit and I want it to increase its size just a little bit. And then I may actually spin it a little too, right? So something along those lines. So how I want it to look. All right, now that I've got that, um, I am going to take that uh, ellipse and I'm going to clone it, right? I'm going to create a copy over the top of it. So again, Control J. And then uh, I'm going to delete so this is basically a group. This is the same as this, right? It's got a, a, an ellipse with an image inside it. On the, the top one, I'm going to delete the image. So once I have that, I'm going to uh, click, open up the, uh, expand the, the group here, and grab this uh, image, select it, that is, and just hit the delete key. And that takes it away. OK? Now I want to increase the size of this a little bit, but I want to keep it centered over the the other uh, ellipse and uh, restrict its aspect ratio. And if it says, it says right here uh, that you can, uh, actually, it's not saying it right now, but one of the th uh, two things, once I try to start doing this, it'll, it will, it'll, uh, down here, it'll say what you have to do. So I'm gonna hold down the control and the shift key at the same time, right? After I grab this, I'm gonna hit control and shift there. Now it says it now. So while I've got this, uh, over the point, it says shift to maintain aspect ratio and control to resize around the center. So that's down here when I'm over one of these nodes. Yeah, so now I'm gonna go ahead and hold down the control and the shift key again, like I said, and I'm gonna drag out this until I get it about the size that I want. And I can resize that later, so that's not that big of a deal. Um, so, uh, the thing I'm going to do with this is let's go ahead and give it a different fill. Um, something along these lines. Let's go ahead and give it a fill that looks a little bit like this. Let's go ahead and increase its opacity to about 5% or 50%, I mean. Um, and then the last thing we're going to do is um, give us an effect and I'm going to give it a Gaussian blur and increase the radius on that almost uh, all the way to the right. Okay. And that's going to give this planet uh, its kind of corona of atmosphere around it. All right. So that's starting to look pretty decent. Right. Uh, so uh, the, the last thing I want to do is, um, since the direction of light is from here to here, right, uh, the light is striking the planet on this upper left-hand corner, um, it's not 
being struck by the light from here on the, on the bottom right-hand corner. So we need to hide that a little bit. So how I'm going to do that is I am going to create a just a, a regular rectangle over the top of this, and this is a little messed up right now. Uh, it's got an opacity and, and things like that. I'm going to change this. I'm going to change it to black, and I'm going to change its opacity to um, zero or 100%, sorry, 100%. So that's covering that completely, okay? And after I've done that, I'm going to give it a transparency as well, and I'm going to give it a circular or radial transparency, okay? And one of the first things I want to do is I want to reverse that gradient, okay? So right now, the the part that's that's less transparent is here in the center and the part that's most transparent is out on the ends of it, I want to invert that so that it's the opposite. And after I've done that, I'm going to take my uh, uh, the center of my radial transparency and move it up right where that sun would be striking this planet and move this other down kind of uh, to where you're getting a good portion of the planet that's not being shown, okay? Uh, you know, you could do, you play with that. You can be a little bit less or a little bit more, but uh, however you want to do it. And then the last thing I want to do is I want to play with that a little bit. So I'm clicking up here on that, that transparency. So over here, it's 0% uh, uh, opaque. And over here, it's 100% opaque. But I'm going to change that to about 95. And you can play with that to make it a little bit less, maybe 92 if you wanted to. I don't know. There you go. And that, after you click off of it, you can see that there's still planet there, but it's, it's, it's hidden. It's on, it's on the dark side of the planet. And that's pretty much how you do it. Um, you, know, you can play around with this a little bit more. You can, um, you know, if I wanted to, to change the, the color of my planet, I could definitely do that um, by just sliding this slider around on the, on the color wheel. I could make it a red planet or a purple or blue or greenish, right? You can play with that however you want. Um, but I thought this orange looked pretty good. So anyway, that's how you do it. I hope you found that interesting and useful, and we'll come back and see us next time.